All right, this is the elements, compounds, and mixtures review video. So remember, in all of these videos, there's going to be two codes. One will be a written code that will come up on the screen, and the other code will be a verbal code said by myself. Each code will be three numbers, and you will need all the codes in order to move on with the homework assignment. So uh, when you're looking at this, everything that's in the notebook should be, everything that's in green, that's highlighted in green, uh, should be written in your notebook. Um, and also, uh, in this one, there is a flow chart that needs to be in the notebook as well. And this is going to be what, your, uh, what, what will be on that notebook check. So this is the weekly review video code. I would recommend writing this down somewhere. All right, so let's ask this question. What is matter? So we're going to put together this flow chart. Now, this flow chart should be on a page in your notebook. So if you ask yourself this question, does it have mass and take up space? Well, then it's matter. So if we look at matter, right? Matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. Matter is usually categorized into three states, solid, liquid, and gas. Now, there are some things that are not matter, that don't have mass and take up space. So these are some examples that are not matter, like light. Doesn't have mass, doesn't take up space. Gravity, doesn't have mass, doesn't take up space. Love, doesn't have mass, does not take up space. So we can organize this even further. So if it is matter, then you can ask yourself, well, does it only have one ingredient? The answer is yes, it's going to be a pure substance. So a pure substance is a substance that contains only one ingredient. So here are some examples of pure substances. Water, gold, diamond, and sugar. Now, if we're looking at a pure substance, we can ask ourselves even more questions. Does it have one capital letter? So if it does have one capital letter, it's going to be an element. So element is a pure substance containing only one kind of atom. An element cannot be separated into simpler materials. Now, there are over 100 elements that are listed in the periodic table. And it only has one capital letter. So here are some examples that you should write on your flow chart. Uh, carbon. So notice it has a capital letter C. Uh, sulfur. Capital letter S. Gold. Now, this one can be tricky because notice there are two letters, but only one is capitalized. Gold is an element. Now, pure diamond. So this one's a trickier one. So there are some things like graphite and diamond. Like if you look at diamond, it's only made up of carbon. It's just in a crystal lattice. But we call this like a pure substance, and it is an element because it's only made up of uh, carbon. Um, now, diatomic elements. So if I scroll up here, you should be able to see some diatomic elements. Uh, so an example would be oxygen. Now notice there will be two oxygens connected together, uh, but I still only have one capital letter. And there are only uh, seven elements that can do that, that can bond with each other. So if you see that, remember, only one capital letter, so that means it is an element. Now, what happens if it has more than one capital letter? Well, then it's what we call a compound. A compound is a pure substance containing two or more kinds of atoms chemically bonded together. So this is a compound that cannot be separated by physical means. So the properties of a compound are usually different from the elements. So two or more capital letters. So here are some examples, like water. And if you look at that, notice it's H2O. So I have two capital letters, two hydrogens, one oxygen. Salt, N-A-C-L. So there are four uh, letters, but only, uh, oh, that's a mistake. That L should be lowercase. So I'll go back and do that. So, uh, there, uh, so sodium and chlorine, that L should be lowercase. You only have two capital letters, and glucose, so that'd be sugar, so C6H12O6, so that's going to be uh, three capital letters. These are all compounds. Um, so now let's uh, look at what happens if it has more than one ingredient. So you ask yourself, does it have more than one ingredient or more than one thing? So there's an and and a plus. So if it does, then it's a mixture. So a mixture is a substance that contains more than one ingredient. Now this is two or more elements or compounds not chemically bonded together. So some examples would be lemonade, uh, brass, uh, trail mix, air. These are all more than one ingredient. Two or more elements or compounds not chemically bonded together. Now, if a mixture, you can ask yourself, can it not be separated? Then it's a homogeneous mixture. Now, let's say I ask this question, though. Well, what's the difference between a diamond, a sapphire, and a ruby? So they're all gemstones. Uh, that you can uh, buy in like jewelry, uh, but a homogeneous mixture, a mixture that is the same throughout. Ingredients cannot be picked out. 
Uh, examples of homogeneous mixtures include lemonade. Uh, so note that you can't pick those out. Uh, brass. So brass is a metal, and it is copper and zinc. So this is a tricky one because you look at that and say, oh, two capital letters. So it must be a compound, but they're not chemically bonded together. Copper and zinc are just mixed together. Air. So the air that we breathe, yes, there's going to be lots of different compounds, but it is a mixture, and you can't really pick them out. So it's uh, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, argon, uh, all make up the air that we breathe. And a ruby. So once again, you might be looking at this and saying, oh, look, I see more capital letters. It, it must be a compound. Now, yes, a ruby is aluminum oxide, right? That's called corundum. But there are chromium atoms mixed in. That's what gives a ruby that red color. And you can see down here uh, that there is a difference between ruby and sapphire. A sapphire is also aluminum oxide or corundum. But what gives a sapphire that blue tint is going to be the uh, iron and titanium mixed in. So that's a tricky part. right? That's, so uh, a diamond is a, a, a pure element because it's only carbon. But a ruby and a sapphire, those are going to be homogeneous mixtures because uh, they do have uh, different uh, elements mixed in. Um, so that is a homogeneous mixture. All right. So now the last one is, can it be separated? So if it can be separated, it's a heterogeneous mixture. Uh, oh, sorry. It's just, let's take a look at compounds up there. It's supposed to be heterogeneous mixture. Uh, but a heterogeneous mixture, a mixture that is different throughout. So ingredients can be picked out. So think about can you actually pick out these ingredients? So some examples of heterogeneous mixtures include trail mix. So think about if you give trail mix to a kid, the first thing they do is they pick out the M&Ms. Uh, milk and cereal. So that's what you do with the spoon. You start picking out the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the cereal from the milk. Uh, salad. So if you order a salad, then you can pick out the tomatoes if you don't like the tomatoes. So this is the flow chart, and this is complete, and this should be in your notebook. Now, notice down at the bottom, I did include, like, I would recommend writing those examples down there. So that way you can see how all of this matter, uh, like, uh, flows together. So at this time, I'm going to go ahead and give you the verbal code. The verbal code is 910. I say that again. The verbal code is 910. So uh, in order to uh, reinforce these concepts, we did uh, two classwork activities where you got uh, practice, uh, telling me whether it's uh, co elements, compounds, or a mixture, a mixture of those two. Um, so that was a, there were two class activities like that. One looking at just actual, uh, just actual pictures of everyday objects, and one looking at little diagrams like you saw in that uh, that uh, video right there of just different molecules and elements and telling whether it's a mixture of those two. And the last one that, we'll, that we did was the grab bag lab. So in this one, there were bags with different models in it. And you had to determine, well, whether it was a mixture and whether it was a mixture of elements and compounds. Then you had to identify using that color code at the top. Uh, so that one could be done. There are pictures on that one. So these three activities were designed to reinforce the idea of elements, compounds, and mixtures. Uh, so just as a final thought, remember, there's just too much unknown in the universe to take a break from learning. Get out there and question everything.